G'day folks, welcome back to Cookie's Fish Room. I'm your host Norm, for those who don't know who I am. Thank you once again for those who are tuning in from last week and tuning in again this week and hello to all the new people out there. I hope you are all well in whatever part of the world you're in and if not, I hope you're feeling better real soon. So today, today's video will be discussing swim bladders in fish and why certain um, you know things happen to them on an, in a negative way and how we can fix those if it can be fixed. So let's start. I've got Optimus Prime here to help me out explain things today. So swim bladder is an organ inside a fish that basically helps it keep its buoyancy. So when you see it swimming, it will be able to swim up, swim across, swim down, eat its food and swim back across again. When a fish has a swim bladder issue, it's not unusual for it to be able to swim to the top, keep its buoyancy, it may roll over to the side, tail up, roll over onto its back when trying to eat food off the bottom of the tank. It's a very hard act for it to have a normal life. To be able to eat food anywhere in a tank, to be able to come up to the surface for oxygen, if um, if one of these guys, and it's it's hard to watch sometimes and the reason why this happens there's numerous reasons out there and i'll try to cover a few of the most common ones and talk about how we can fix it basically so the gas inside the um the the organ itself i should say is is full of is full of gas so it's not that the gas escapes it's more that the organ gets squashed and when this organ gets squashed it then it's not performing its normal duties, its normal role. And what causes it to get squashed is where the issue comes. So it gets, there's no such thing as swim bladder disease. And that's one of my most common pet hates there is. So the swim bladder itself doesn't have a disease. It doesn't wake up, you don't wake up, the, the fish don't wake up one morning with a disease on its swim bladder itself. There are other things in its body that's affecting the swim bladder itself. So it's not a disease per se. So things that can cause the swim bladder to be squashed or not to act the way it should. Number one, parasites. So the parasites could be in its stomach, in its body somewhere and causes bloating of the fish. Now, the pressure from that bloating will put pressure on the swim bladder. Number two, dropsy, fluid. So when an infection is in, a bacterial infection inside a fish while it's suffering from dropsy, that liquid, that pus, that whatever's in there will put pressure on the swim bladder. Number three, overeating. Feeding your fish too much, we've all heard it's a bad thing. And this is another reason why it's bad. A full tummy will put pressure on the swim bladder, causing it to have that sort of motion in the water, being unable to keep its buoyancy. And the last most common occurrence is damage to the swim bladder. So damage can happen in numerous amount of ways. You can be trying to, I've seen this happen so many times and it doesn't, people don't do this on purpose. When trying to get a fish out of a, out of a, a tank you could with a net you can press it up against the glass or against a, a rock or something and you squash it by accident that will damage its swim bladder it doesn't have to have its guts come out of it but you will see a bit of um it will have that inability to swim so that's one of the most common ways to damage the swim bladder another way is through one of the previous reasons i've mentioned it can get damage permanent damage if those reasons aren't addressed as fast as possible. Now, there are ways to fix the issue with a swim bladder. And the best way is to reduce what's causing the pressure on the swim bladder. So the first and most common way, and this is what I always recommend when treating for swim bladder, is to fast the fish for 48 hours. The longer you can fast it, the better it is. Now, by fasting it, it just it really gets the stomach, the pressure from the stomach reduces from any bladder, bladder issues. And if there are any parasites that are feeding from the fish, from its, um, 
its own food source, which is very common, it will stop um, that pressure, will reduce. So fasting, it does not mean fasting and feeding peas, it means fasting, it means zero food for 48 hours. I always keep, no matter what fish it is, depending on its size, of course, size restrictions, you know, you can't have a huge koi fish and put it into a small box, but I do tend to put most of my fish inside a breeder box when suffering from swim bladder issues. So it limits their um, wastage of their energy trying to swim all the time. So give them that rest, you know, keep the lights off, fast them for 48 hours, and after that 48 hours is over, then reassess the situation. Now, if you don't see any improvement with it, then start looking at things like parasite treatments or bacterial infection treatments. You start moving to Marison 2, you start moving to Levamisole. All the time, you keep this fish inside a breeder box still. It does not hurt to fast the other fish at the same time in case you have been feeding too much. You, or you may just have a case of a fish that just likes to eat more than the others. Little piggies aren't uncommon. So don't be afraid to fast all the fish, to treat your, your entire tank with whatever you're treating that fish with, Levamisole or with Marison 2, for example. My two go-to meds, really, along with trisulfur in my um, quarantine process. And if you haven't seen that video yet, check out that video down below. It'll be one of the first videos that I've ever come out with. So they all tend to help. And last and foremost, I always try, when I've exhausted these methods, an Epsom salt bath. Now that will draw out any excess fluid inside that fish if there is fluid causing an issue around the swim bladder. Now, if all these fail, and sorry, if you want to know how to give an Epsom salt bath and how much Epsom salt to use in the bath, how often and etc., check out the Dropsy video. All the information is listed in there. I do go through it thoroughly. If all that fails, all the above fail, you're probably dealing with a swim bladder issue that's due to uh, um, a permanent um, disorder. There's damage being done to it somehow. Once it's been done, damage, you really can't undo it. There's no ways. I mean, I've seen videos of goldfish having, you know, um, foam tied to the top to help their buoyancy and little wheelchairs and stuff for them. And that's great. I mean, if you can do that without hurting your fish, I'm all for it, but I'm not all for grabbing a fish in your hand and tying things to it. You do do more damage to it, potentially with its slime coat, etc. And you could, you know, break its fins or hurt it in some other way and shorten its lifespan much quicker. I don't, I don't say go and get rid of this fish and use the clove oil method straight away. It can have a happy life in a small amount of water where it doesn't have to waste its energy swimming or trying to swim all day and keep buoyant. A fish doesn't know any better than to look for food and to try and swim for it. If you can limit those things, bring the food to it and limit its swimming, it will have potential to live for a while. So I know myself, you know, some of these fish are my closest pets um, and they do, you know, I don't want to see them go. So if I can extend its life in any way or form, it's worth doing. It's not always about breeding. It's not always about pretty colors. And it's not always about, you know, how many um, shows I can win with it. Sometimes it's about the friendship that they perform, that they give you, I mean. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in. That covers the swim bladder issue. I will be back next week with another video. Hopefully that's helpful to somebody out there who needs it. Thank you very much. If you've not hit the subscribe button yet to this video, please hit subscribe and hopefully, um, to this channel I should say, and if you haven't given us a thumbs up, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps. And hitting the notification bell so you know when we bring out a new video for you. Thanks again. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.